This video will show an introduction to analysis of covariance. We'll talk about how ANCOVA combines the principles from ANOVA, or analysis of variance, and regression. We'll talk about what the assumptions are when we do analysis of covariance and how they can be assessed. And we'll talk about how to apply the analysis of covariance techniques into our discipline in agriculture and natural resources. So let's take a look back. We've learned a lot about analysis of variance and about regression. So you remember that the analysis of variance tests whether several populations have the same means. And by doing this, it compares how far apart the sample means are with how much variation there is within a sample. And so as an example, we could do a one-way analysis of variance where we just have one level or one treatment that we're analyzing. We could have two factors that combine to form several different treatments. This would be a two-way ANOVA. In this case, we have a main effect from level one, a main effect from level two, and we might have an interaction effect between level one and level two. And so that's analysis of variance. In regression, this allows us to summarize and study relationships between two continuous variables or two quantitative variables. And so this is really important because regression is so common and analysis of variance is so common, we can combine the two to get analysis of covariance. So analysis of covariance takes kind of what ANOVA has and also what regression has. We can think of analysis of covariance as a general linear model which blends together what we know about ANOVA and what we know about regression. And so we can say here that analysis of covariance arises when we, when we include a continuous covariate inside an analysis of variance. And so the analysis of covariance evaluates whether or not the means of a dependent variable are equal across different levels of a categorical independent variable. And this categorical or independent variable is often an experimental treatment. Now what is interesting about the analysis of covariance is that it statistically controls for the effects of other continuous variables that are not of primary interest. And so we call these covariates, these other variables that are continuous but may not be the, of primary interest in our experiment. And so we can then uh, kind of think about the covariate and treat that like we might treat it in a regression equation. That is, it's a continuous value, it's a quantitative number. We can use that to maybe better inform what our analysis of variance might do otherwise. So about the assumptions in the analysis of covariance, many of the same things for analysis of variance and regression. That is, the treatment effect and the covariate are independent. That is to say, if we have one experimental treatment, that's independent from some covariate that we might also be measuring. We assume that the variance is the same across all values of x. We assume that there's a linear, a linear relationship between our value x and our value y that we're interested in. And we assume that the residuals or the errors from our model are going to be normally distributed. So also for analysis of covariance, we're going to assume that the regression slopes are the same for all of the different treatment groups. And we'll see a little bit more about what this looks like in a little bit. But we might call these homogeneous slopes. That is, the slopes for all the different groups that we analyze are going to be equal for some covariate that we're interested in. So this idea of homogeneity of regression slopes is essential, and we'll spend more time learning about it and as it applies to the analysis of covariance. 